We welcome you to the Cutter Sports Complex for some Friday afternoon baseball as the Brescia Bearcats come to town to take on IU Southeast. Grenadiers enter today 18 and 12 on the season. 10 and 2 in conference play. Brescia is 12 and 26 and 6 in the league. Let's check the lineup for you. DeMarco Miller will lead off and play center field, followed by Gavin Hubner at second base. Johnny Foti will be at third base. The cleanup hitter is Mikey Clements in left field. Bryce Gable will do the catching and bat fifth. Kendall Quartz will bat sixth and play right field. The latter third of Hugo Benoit at first base, Josh, Josh Cossett, the designated hitter, and Kaysen Troutman will be the shortstop. Pitching for Brescia is Preston Franey. On the mound for IU Southeast is Luke Schaefer. The senior from Leewood, Kansas. He's five and one on the season, making his ninth start. 50 innings pitch and a 2.16 ERA, 53 strikeouts to 12 walks, an opponent batting average of 239. DeMarco Miller steps in and we're just about set to go. Schaefer delivers, first pitch fouled off for strike one. Miller on the season, a 3-10 batter. Four home runs, 21 runs batted in for Miller. That's a strike, one and two. Count evens two and two or a strikeout, rather. Swing and a miss. Miller is retired, so one away. The second baseman, number six, Gavin Hubner. Now Gavin Hubner. That's a strike. Hubner, a junior from Granite City, Illinois. Lifted into right field. Back at the track, that'll be off the wall. Hubner will cruise into second with a stand-up double. A rocket out to right for Hubner. And that'll be his eighth double of the season. Now Johnny Foti, the third baseman. The third baseman, number 13, Johnny Foti. The 281 batter, no home runs, 11 runs batted in for the junior from north of the border. Down and away, 1 0 to Foti. That's a line drive back up the middle. That'll be a base hit. And he'll score a run that, oh, but a closer play than I expected. As Hubner comes around to score, that'll be an RBI single. And it's one nothing Brescia here in the first. Foti drives in his 12th RBI of the season with that single. And now Clements, the left fielder. Got back for strike one. That 
That's fouled away. Clements in a hole 0-2. A 316 batter, one home run, 16 runs batted in. For the graduate student from Bardstown, Kentucky. It's off the plate, one and two. So a double and then an RBI single. Gets a run across for Brescia here in the first with one out. A check on the runner at first. He's back safely. Schaefer delivers. Popped up. Into center. Lights there. Makes the catch. Two outs. Check the Grenadier defense for you. Colin Long is in left. Mason White's in center. Luke Powell's in right. Third to first for IU Southeast. Slater Shield, Cody Putnam, Ethan Burdett, and Max Falk. And Logan Murphy catches Luke Schaefer. There's a slow roller to Burdett at second. A throw on to first. Gamble is retired, but Brescia strikes for a run, and after a half inning, the Bearcats lead it 1 0. Preston Franey in uh, for, on the mound for the Bearcats here. A four and three record in 46 and a third innings pitch, a 4.27 ERA. He's making his 10th start of the season. Slater Shield leads it off for the Grenadiers. And he'll take a strike. Shield on the season, a 327 batter, no home runs, 20 runs batted in. Also eight doubles off the plate. That's a strike. The 2-2 two -two pitch. Popped into foul territory. Will it stay in the park? No. So Shield stays alive. And 
And here goes the other way foul this time. Shield a senior from Franklin, Tennessee. He's kind of taken over the leadoff position. Good eye there. The count goes full. One hopper to short. Troutman makes the play off the hop, fires across for out number one. Now Mason White. The center fielder, number 15, Mason White. White, a 426 batter, 12 home runs, 46 runs batted in. He's 10th in the NAIA and runs batted in. Takes ball one. And is tops in the conference with 12 home runs. The pitch. Ripped back up the middle. That'll be a base hit. And the hot hitting continues for White. So the tying runs aboard here with one away in the bottom of the first. Now Luke Powell, the right fielder. The right fielder, number 24, Luke Powell. That's a strike to Powell. On the season, a 250 batter, one home run, 17 runs batted in. Fouled back, 0 and 2. Takes a lead. High one and two. Lifted into left. That'll be tracked down by the left fielder Clements for out number two. White retreats back to first. And now Cody Putnam. The shortstop, number six, Cody Putnam. Check on White again. Putnam, a 281 batter, three home runs, 14 runs batted in. And he takes a strike. Putnam, a senior from Evansville. Another one of the veterans on this Grenadier ball club. The pitch, runner goes and it's fouled off. 0 and 2.
Off the plate, one and two. Two and two, the ball squirts free, but White stays put. Count goes full. So White will be off here. Fly ball on the left. Clements. Makes the catch and ends the inning. We move to the second. one nothing, Brescia. Steven Utes, Kyle Hawkins with you here in the top of the second inning. Luke Schaefer back on the mound here as he tries to navigate this Brescia lineup and keep the lead within one. Yeah. Good swing and a miss. So this will be Quartz, the right fielder. Count now two and two. Courts on the season, a 287 batter, two home runs, 15 runs batted in. That yeah. one's going to be through the right side. So is Schaefer not able to quite settle in just yet, Steven? No, he got the, he got a. Batter out in the top of the first, then a double and an RBI single, and now a leadoff batter reaches here in the second. As Hugo Benoit will be the batter. He's a freshman from Quebec, Canada. A little ways from home. Wanted to head a little south, apparently. Yeah, good breaking ball in there for a strike from Schaefer. Benoit in the season, only hitting 113, two home runs, nine runs batted in. Saying a check over by Schaefer, but back in plenty of time was Quartz.
Good job by Murphy to corral it and keep it close enough to not allow courts to advance. And this is where if you're Schaefer, you've just got to go attack these batters. He's on. He's been on a bit of a roll here entering today. The ace of the staff in the first game of the series. Nice pitch there, fools Benoit. And yeah, that's going to be a good strikeout, but courts will move up to second base. I think that may be one of the rare rare times in amateur baseball where you don't get a guy that strikes out with a runner on first and still trying to advance to first. I think that may be one of the most common things. I'm not saying that you know, <laughs> Benoit would have done that, but I feel like we just see that so often. That brings up the designated hitter, Josh Cossett. And he's a 213 batter. On the season, one home run, nine runs batted in. A couple of doubles. Grenier dugout disagreed with that call. But doesn't really matter, Stephen. It does not. Unfortunately. That one's about out of play down the left field line towards the bullpen. Cossett, a junior, another Canadian. And another opportunity here with a runner in scoring position for the Bearcats. They had an opportunity in the first inning and cashed in. We'll see how. See if Schaefer is able to continue to dig in. Not had his best stuff, kind of like you said. Been on a little bit of a roll. Um, and just struggling to find his footing here early. Full count now. Nice eye there by Costa to lay off that pitch. That one's going to hit him. So Quartz will be at second. Benoit will be at first here, only one away. Case and Troutman, the shortstop, step in for her, his first plate appearance of the afternoon. Schaefer, one pitch away here, double play, an option here. Ooh. Interesting. It's a little low. And a little late on the call. <laughs> Schaefer will take it as he's been a little around the strike zone here today, not having the best control. They'll look back at second. Ooh. That looked like that was going to head into center field. Nice job by Burdett there to flag that one down. Yeah, Schaefer just trying to give a little bit of a uh, just a show me flip over, not to make it count for his one reset, right? Because if you make a throw, then it does not count as your reset. But a good job there to get back ahead 0-2 now to the Bearcat shortstop. Good breaking ball. And good job by Troutman to lay off. job by Troutman to just foul that pitch away, stay in the at bat here, trying to get a better pitch to hit with a runner in scoring position here, only one away, trying to tack on this 
of the run into this lead for the Bearcats. Yeah, if you're Brescia, I mean, you're assuming one run's not going to do it in this game, especially with the way the offense for the Grenadiers has been playing of late. Is that one good pitch, but going to miss low and outside. That one, you can give credit to the uh, home plate umpire on that one because that was clean through the wickets of Murphy, but stopped by the foot of the umpire. A little kick save. So full count to Troutman. Toss it on first, Benoit, or rather Quartz on second. And the payoff. And there's a walk, so a nice at bat there by Troutman. To, and he turns the line up over for DeMarco Miller. And so far this year, this is uncharted territory for Schaefer as, I mean, he's really been week in and week out the most consistent starter for your Grenadiers. And it's going to continue to be a little shaky as that one's going to bounce all the way to the dugout. So... Russia has their second run. Off of a wild pitch, and luckily that it hit the fence and the dugout didn't roll into the dugout, would have advanced another runner home. So just, yeah, the control not there for Schaefer so far just spikes that pitch in the dirt. One ball, no strike to the Bearcat center fielder. That one in there for a strike. I don't know if you mentioned it earlier, but I think you do have to shout out one of the Bearcats assistant coaches for that flow he's got oh. coaching first base. That is immaculate. Yeah, I believe that's uh, Mark Silva over there with some great lettuce at first base. It's above the, average to say the least. Oh, I think. they're way above. Spectacular, some are saying. <laughs> so the one, two. That one hit back up the middle and a good play by Burdett. We'll get the out, but a run will come to score. So the Bearcats will trade the out for a run as the lead is now 3 nothing. And nice job by Burnett to, Burdett to get over there, keep the ball in the infield. and Well, and that right there goes to show the, the wild pitch being even more costly because that's pretty tailor-made as far as a double play ball. Yep. And could be looking at out of the inning right there. Um, but instead, one on the wild pitch and then another right there on the on the ground out. So 3 nothing lead for, for Brescia. That one throw behind. Mur Murphy taking some risks as well here. Yeah. Looking for a pickoff there. That's one with two outs. I just go after the batter. Ooh. Ooh, kick save there by Herbig. He'll make the play. Good on him. Just didn't have a big enough vertical to miss that one. So, but a kick save and a one-two count to Hubner. So it looks like Brescia is just coming in with a plan to attack early. Uh, not letting Schaefer kind of dictate the at-bat, which kudos to them on coming in with a quality game plan that seems to be working thus far. So some recipe, a recipe for success, rather, when you have a good game plan and then Schaefer not in what we could probably say his sharpest form. Well, they also haven't played into his hand at all either. They've been very disciplined, not chasing pitches. In the breaking ball, he had a nice one in the last at bat to start off the at bat, but the breaking ball hasn't been great enough yet to where it's he's throwing it consistently for strikes where you have to really honor it. So payoff here to Hubner. That one a breaking ball. Mm. 
That'll be ball four. Yeah, and Glendon Rush will go check on his starter here. So I know you got it over in front of you, Stephen. How many pitches has Schaefer had thus far? He's already up to 46. And we aren't even through the second, so definitely running up that pitch count here in the second inning and discerning a couple more runs. So a run in the first and now two in the second. Runners at the corners here with two away. Fote will try and drive in another run here. He is, he had a base hit in the first and drove in the first run of the game, so. Would love to drive in another here. That one hit the other way well, but under it is Powell. So the damage will stop there, but the Bearcats do scratch another couple runs. So their lead grows to three as we head to the bottom half, three nothing. Ethan Burdett set to lead things off for IU Southeast as they're definitely going to look to get something going here and try to start chipping away at that Bearcat lead. This is where I think you got to be patient here, try and get a runner on here early, and you don't need a home run or anything. Just put some good at-bats together and chip away. It's still only the second. Yeah, and Franey is definitely the workhorse, so to speak, for Brescia, as that one's going to be hit right back up the middle, and that's about as uh, stereotypical of Ethan Burdett right there. Right. Just not, not too much, just what you called for, Stephen. Just a little base knock right back up the middle. Well, and Franey's got an opponent batting average of 304 and an ERA of four point, almost 4.3. So he's going to most likely give up some runs throughout the game. So yeah. you've got an opportunity here if you just don't play into his hand and expand the strike zone to to get back in this one. Well, and one thing to note, in 46 and a third innings coming into today, um, only seven walks. So he's so going to be around the strike zone. Strike thrower, absolutely. Yeah. Um, Not a, not a huge strikeout total with 22. Um, but that one skied, and Flock not too pumped about that one. As coming on to make the play there is Hubner for the first out. So now Logan Murphy, the catcher, will step in with one on, one out. Yeah, 
a move and back in plenty of time. Murphy hitting 333 so far on the season. 13 RBIs, no home runs yet. Breaking ball there, hit well to left, but not deep. And there to make the play in plenty of time was Clements. So after a leadoff hit from Burdett, two quick outs. And that'll bring up the designated hitter now with two away, Trevor Goodwin. Trevor Goodwin, who we've seen hit some massive home runs. We've also seen him get a couple really good bunts down in the same game. He can do a little bit of everything. Yeah, starting to find a little more regular playing time as well. Kind of back slotted into that designated hitter role that he was, you know, the staple of last year. You know, this is only his 15th game, and this is only his 20th at bat. So still trying to work, you're right, work back into the lineup. I think now as we've gotten into the conference play, he's started to see a little more playing time and hopefully he can get going here. As that's going to do a job, that's going to be through the four hole. And on his horse over to third is Burdett. So we'll have runners at the corners. And that's all you're asking for right there. If you're a good one, just move the runner along here. Now runners at the corners. We saw a wild pitch in the previous half inning. That could get a run on the board. Now, or Colin Long can have an opportunity here to drive in a run. And Long went through a little bit of a, a slump there in the first you know, couple weeks of conference, but has been picking it up as of late. He'll look to continue his more traditional self-hitting. Still a 296 batter. And I don't know if you had talked about it while I was away, Stephen, but I know a lot of the offensive uh, turnaround is due to the uh, the reinstitution of the old skipper Ben Real as he rejoins the dugout and the coaching staff. Yeah, he's uh, now in an assistant role uh, and getting the the offense to seem to start clicking. So foul ball there. Yeah, some mid-season coaching changes for the Grandier staff. And Real had the opportunity to rejoin the dugout with longtime friend, now head coach Brett Neffendorf. That one also fouled off the screen. <clears throat> and I was talking with Ben this morning, and it's one of those things where he, he really enjoys this this side of things. You know, not being the head guy, he's he's there to just have a lot of conversations and do anything he can to help, and I think that really fits him well as that one misses to run it full. And I think that's really what some of the newer guys needed here, just some confidence boosts. and Some good conversation, yeah. right? Some, some yeah. help with some of the strategic planning, and if you know or have ever been in the dugout with Rio, that's his specialty. So breaking ball there, that's going to be a tough play for the third baseman as he's going to have to get rid of it. But he did a great job, and that's going to get to first base or by first base, so it's going to be the first run. So an infield hit, and then an error moves Goodwin to third. So a little jam shot, well placed there by Long. And it'll turn things back over to Shield. But beforehand, Herbig's going to go and have a conversation with his pitcher. And again, that's what we were talking about a, a minute ago. You just put the ball in play, and, and things can happen with a runner at third. And not great contact there by Long at all, but put it in the right spot and beat out the throw. And now there's a runner on the board, and now another runner at third base in the form of Goodwin. It doesn't always take, you know, a – a barrel and extra bases to do a job. So a good battle there from Long to challenge the defense with two strikes. And, you know, trusting his legs as he's one of the more plus runners that the Grenadiers have, even though it seems like they all seem to be some 
version of a plus runner, except for probably the man standing on third. <laughs> and Shield has really caught fire here. 327 now. Driven in 20. Looking to add to that total here. So the first challenge here for Preston Franey. As that one's hit well, but maybe a little too well, and that's going to be right at the center fielder who will make the catch. So Grenadiers will scratch one across and cut into the lead a little bit as we head to the top of the third. Brescia three, IU Southeast one here in New Albany. Mikey Clements will lead off the top of the third for Brescia. He quickly finds himself ahead in the count, 2-0. and oh. And so far that's been an issue for Schaefer, not being able to get ahead in the counts. Have to come back here, and now it's... Very oh. uncharacteristic yeah. thus far for Schaefer. That's going to be a four-pitch walk to start things off. And when you've just, you know, tried to kind of get the momentum back with a run and you're chipping away here, that's just the last thing you need is a four-pitch leadoff walk the following inning. This is also where you just need him to battle and eat up some innings here. You've got a three-game series this weekend, a doubleheader tomorrow. You don't want to go to your bullpen too early if you can avoid it. But again. It's five straight. Five straight, up to 53 pitches, and we're only in the third. Now six straight after a breaking ball in the dirt to Gamble. And he'll find his first one of the inning there, and he's going to need a lot more of that. That one through the six hole, and that's going to be a base knock. So runners on first and second, nobody away for the right field or Kendall Courts. And we'll have a courtesy runner over at first for the catcher, number 24, Darnell Coleman. So Coleman will run at first. Rocking the, the powder blue sliding mitt and helmet. I like the coordination there. He's a junior from Chicago. Got a little style. Yeah, his court showed bump, pulled back, and 
fouled that one back out of play across the former train tracks. Oh, the, oh, the powder blue sliding glove and powder blue helmet. Yeah, that's a, some good coordination. Good change up there, cut on and missed. See if Schaefer's found something as he's going to look to put away Quartz as he's ahead 0-2. The pitch. Three runs on four hits with an error for Brescia here in the third. That one. Good pitch just on the outside corner for strike three. Just paints the outside corner there. Probably his best pitch of his outing so far. Big strike out there. Brings up Benoit. 0 for 1 with the strikeout. Maybe a little beneficial nod there by the umpire as Schaefer will take the call for sure. As he's now gotten ahead to the last two batters. Love a ground ball. At 0-2, I think he'd also take a strikeout. He doesn't care as long as he strands these runners. He'll take it whatever way he can. The 0-2 to Benoit. Breaking ball, cut on and missed, and a good one. Trying to make his case that he thought he uh, tipped it. Home plate umpire disagreed. And we saw that last night in the uh, Rangers game. Okay. And the Cubs. Yep. That is a, uh, that was a display of ball don't lie yesterday. <laughs> that's, that's right. Even though the ball does in fact lie very often. Some would say. That one's gonna be right up the middle and that's gonna likely score a run. And a good throw over to third off his foot. So good job there from Cossett. First pitch he sees back up the middle, and they're going to scratch across another. The Bearcats have scored in the first three innings here. And, again, they're not doing too much here. They're, it's these, this isn't a home run parade by any stretch, just timely hitting, really. And a little two-out rally here for the Bearcats. Makes it 4-1. to one. And Troutman hits the first pitch he sees, and that's got a good chance to get down, and it will. Good job by Powell to get it in quickly, but a run's going to score. and Lead grows to four now, score 5-1. Brescia. Turn his lineup over for Miller. One pitch away here is Schaefer. But needs to make a good one here with runners at second and third. Brescia can really blow this one open if Miller comes through here with a base hit. That really was a nice job by Powell to get that ball back in quickly and limit that to just one run coming in. Here's Schaefer and Murphy maybe unable to get on the same page there.
2-1 pitch. That one fouled in the box. Six hits, three walks already for Schaefer. Schaefer had only walked 12 coming into this with 50 innings pitched already. So, like we'd mentioned, not most characteristic display for him. And as you mentioned earlier, credit to Brescia for not nibbling and bailing him out. Being disciplined at the plate, and as we've seen in the last couple batters, taking advantage of mistakes. Miller continues to battle as he fouls that breaking ball out of play. And that's a good one as Miller's just going to head back to the dugout, but Brescia does scratch a couple across the Rising Grinders. Get into the lead. Brescia extends it. So we head to the bottom of the third, 5-1 Brescia. Mason White looking to get the offense going for IU Southeast as they face a four-run deficit here in the bottom of the third. Had a base hit in his previous at-bat. That one's off the, the end and just snared there by the third baseman, Fody. So two pitches and then one out. For Franey, but Luke Powell will step in. That'll be a breaking ball inside. Almost caught a piece of him, but does not. One just clips the outside corner. Here's the 2 2 pitch from Franey.
Grenier's not really, with the ex exception of really, I would say, I mean, Burdett and then the base hit by Burnett, Burdett and the base hit by White, really not squaring the ball up. So we'll see if... Thought there was the possibility for a pitch clock violation there because one of the nuances to that rule, Stephen, is when there's nobody on base and you're out of the stri out of the windup, there is no reset. Mm. So you, you can step off, but the clock continues to run, um, which, like I said, is one of the nuances that not even a lot of umpires get right. But that one's chopped to short and makes the play in with a strong throw across the diamond is Troutman. So first two Grenadiers are retired in the bottom of the third. One must have missed Jess inside. Thought it caught a good amount of the zone, but that one's in there for a strike to even them up anyway. Putting them 0 for 1 so far today. Franny doing a good job, just trying to throw up a zero after his team extends the lead. Cody Putnam hopefully has different ideas. And a great diving play there by the center fielder, Miller, as I thought that was down for sure, but comes flying through the air. So an exceptional play by the Brescia center fielder will retire the Grenadiers in order as we head to the top of the fourth. Score remains 5-1. to one. Gavin Hubner, the leadoff hitter in this inning for Brescia, watches a ball there. Schaefer back out for another inning. And it appears, I mean, not much action down in the Grenadier bullpen, so Brett Neffendorf sticking with his, his ace in this one. I'm a little surprised, but because he's already up to 72 pitches. But again, you don't want to go to your bullpen too early if you can avoid it here at the beginning of a series. So, and I know this is not Schaefer's best work by any means, but it's two in a row that were borderline. And he did not get the call. So another walk, another leadoff walk, and now Foti will be the batter. One for two today with an RBI. Yeah, but as I was saying, you know, five runs isn't 
by any means a great outing thus far as they've scored in every inning. But this game is not out of hand by any means quite yet. Particularly with the Grenadier offense, the way that they've been hitting here recently. Yeah, they're not showing quite the shades of that just yet today. But as we enter that middle third of this game, see if they can start turning it around. That one misses outside. Schaefer just continues to struggle to find it. It's been very sporadic today. 2-1. And I think the really hit, not only is the lack of control the issue, it's even when he's able to find, you know, a couple of pitches in an at bat and, and retire a batter, he's been a, he hasn't been able to string that together on consecutive batters or throughout an inning. And anytime he's been in the zone, Brush has been kind of all over it. But he's going to get a good strike call there as that will retire Johnny Fody. And bring up the left fielder, Mikey Clements. That one, I was watching the umpire yeah. as the he called the uh, the obstruction, but he you know you don't stop any play, you let it play out as Shield comes in to make the play anyway. So, so Clements was going to be out one way or another, but it'll be a P five in the scorebook, and that makes way for the Bearcat catcher Bryce Gamble. Hubner uh, doing a little dancing over there, trying to, I think, time up Schaefer. See if he can't get himself into scoring position with two outs. No play over at first with the throw over. Schaefer comes set. And that'll be a balk. And Brett Neffendorf is going to have a conversation. And the conversation is pretty brief. It's just going to be a balk. So Hubner will move to second. As it's a 1-1 count still to gamble. Now a base knock likely scores the second baseman for Brescia. And they're going to get him on the back pick. So Hubner just out in no man's land. Trying to get a little too aggressive there, especially with two outs. But he's going to get back picked, and that will end the inning. So good throw by Murphy. And we head to the bottom half. Grenadiers throw up their first zero of the day.
Ethan Burdett will be the first Grenadier batter in the bottom of the fourth. Grenadier is able to put up a zero for the first time today. And going back to that pickoff there, a seed from Logan Murphy down to second. A bad throw would have gotten the runner anyway, but he threw a bullet. Yeah, it was almost as if Hubner thought he wasn't going to throw it back because he wasn't really, uh, like, sprinting back towards second after kind of getting that far off, so... Grandiers would love to build off of that momentum. Franey has other ideas as he's ahead of Burdett, one and two. That one grounded to Troutman. And a strong throw is going to get him. Now Max Flock, 0 for 1. That one chopped and well positioned over there was Hubner. So two quick outs. Not exactly what you're looking for if you're the Grenadiers. No, not what you're looking for. And I mean, I'd like to see the Grenadiers try and work a count a little bit here. And uh, although we've mentioned earlier that Franey's not going to walk people usually, but if maybe, and there's a hit batter, string a couple runners together and see what happens. He's again, he's got over a four ERA. As appears, Braden Hazelwood will be our courtesy runner. Number 45, Trevor Goodwin. So, so yep, Hazelwood will run at first, and Goodwin will be the batter here. Braden Hazelwood. That one's going to be hit down the left field line, and that's going to be extra bases for Trevor Goodwin. Around and going to get sent going through the stop oh, sign is goodness. Hazelwood, and it was a late stop by Joe Natterman, but a good decision by Hazelwood as he's going to come around to score. So a double down the left field line by Trevor Goodwin, and just like that, two quick outs, and then two pitches later, the Grenadiers have a run. And that was a play where... Hazelwood had it in front of him the whole time. And, yeah, you're right, it was a late stop sign, and I thought he was going to be toast, but a uh, head first slide, and it wasn't even close at home. Yeah, I I thought Natterman was going to send him the whole way, and then maybe right of the cutout is when he decided to throw up the stop sign, and Hazelwood had other ideas, and kudos to him as that's going to cut into this. Russia lead score now five to two. Some fantastic camera work by me as I did not change the camera up until Trevor was standing on second base. So, you know, gotta own, gotta own the the bad times like you do the good ones, Stephen. So, sometimes we just have to, you know, describe the plays with words. <laughs> That'll make way for Colin Long here with two outs in the bottom of the fourth. Trevor Goodwin, your runner on second. First pitch swinging, and that's going to be crowd by the first baseman, Benoit. So no more there for the Grenadiers, but they do win an inning for the first time. So we head to the top of the fifth score, 5-2 Brescia.
Bearcat catcher Bryce Gable steps in to face Schaefer. And first pitch he sees is hammered down the left field line, but well foul. Hanging breaking ball there, but Gamble got out ahead of it and pulled it foul. Does appear there is some action down in the Grenadier bullpen now. As Schaefer delivers a breaking ball in the left-handed batter's box. It appears, if my eyes do not deceive me, that it is senior from Louisville, Kentucky, Brennan Kester. I will take your word for it. The one one there from Schaefer in there for called strike. And quite frankly, I mean, if Schaefer can get through this inning when he has had much less than his best stuff today, to go five innings, yeah, five runs you're not going to be happy about, but to give the Grenadiers five innings, that's not a horrible outing to hang in there. Absolutely not. And I know as we talked about Ben Real joining the staff, definitely from an offensive standpoint, because in his tenure there's no starting pitcher that's going to give up five in the first three innings and probably still be out there at this point. Captain Hook over there. <laughs> As a good breaking ball there, gets a half-hearted swing from Gamble. That goes towards the Brescia dugout. I, I was the, uh, the recipient of a couple of those quick mm -hmm. hooks. You know the feeling. Yeah, yeah, you win some, you lose some. But a good pitch there by Schaefer, fouled off again. So a good battle by the Brescia catcher. Schaefer's miss with the breaking ball has been the, the pretty aggressive pull. And that's in sharp contrast to what we've seen here. His past couple outings where he was just snapping that breaking ball in for a strike almost at will. So far today, they haven't even been really hittable. And that one's going to be chopped and foul. So smart move from Gamble to take his time, catch his breath. That's one of the probably more common things you see is uh, the batter try to kind of like rush back to home plate and hurry back up into the box, but probably not the most advantageous thing as a hitter. But as you know, Stephen, I haven't hit since I was 16 years old. So That one in there called strike three. There's a nice put away pitch there by Schaefer. Strikeout number seven for the senior. Brings up the right fielder for Brescia, Kendall Quartz. And there's a breaking ball flipped in there for a strike, so much better one from, from Luke on there, that one. Doubles up on it. That one not as good. So after tiring the leadoff man. Falls behind here, three and one to Kendall Quartz. That's going to be hit weekly over there. Good play by Flock and flip in, and plenty of time as Schaefer. So good PFP. As you hear the boys chant that one in the uh, dugout. That's not the easiest play over there. You're, and nice job by Schaefer to get over there quickly and and get to the bag and present a nice target for. Uh, flock to flip that on yeah and not the easiest play by shape for Schaefer but not the easiest play for flock right. either as he's you know going away from first kind of on the backhand so that one's going to be fouled softly 
towards the end of the dugout. So quickly 0-2. Now up to 100 pitches, 101 there. Yeah, this is likely going to be it for Schaefer. Would love to get Benoit here, and he's going to do it. So a great bounce back couple innings, and like you said, Stephen, I mean, you're going to take that if you're Brett Neffendorf. You know, struggle of a first three innings, giving up five, but through five to only allow five. Lots of fives. Limit the damage, keep the Grenadiers in it. They're only down by three as they head to the bat rack. Down Grenadier third baseman, face Franey to lead off the bottom of the fifth. Shows bump, pulls back, breaking ball in the dirt. I don't know, they still have a lot to, to, to capitalize on, Stephen, but I feel the energy shifting a little bit in the Grenadier dugout. As that one's hit on the button, but wind blowing out there in a couple steps in front of the track is Miller. So good swing by Shield, but just not enough juice. Yeah, I think if you know you've gotten that that momentum a little bit here, Schaefer being able to put together back-to-back -back scoreless innings, Grenier's chip away. You've got the heart of the or the top of the lineup coming up here. Shield now White get a run here and all of a sudden it's a ball game. A little uh, funky timing on the delivery from Franey. I believe that was a knuckleball. And I can confidently tell you I've never seen one thrown for a strike in person. That was uh that completely froze Mason White there, dropped in on him. Yeah, the the quick pitch knuckleball is something I did not have yeah, on my bingo I, card. I did not have my bingo card today. Either. That one's grounded over to short. Troutman makes the throw in plenty of time. So just as I thought, the momentum may have been shifting and the energy changed. Good job by Franey to get a couple quick outs. And he's only at 63 pitches, so he could go for a little bit here. The right fielder, number 24, Luke Owl. With two outs in the fifth. <laughs> yeah, as Powell's going to try to do a little drag bunt there. A little sneak attack. 0 for 2 today, trying to get something going. Bunts it foul. And 
And this is really, you know, regardless of what happens here in this inning, this is a huge spot for the Grenier bullpen because you're still within striking distance. The bullpen has been shaky at times. Especially in the middle innings. Can they put together some scoreless innings and keep IU Southeast in it here in the 6th, 7th, into the 8th? Because, quite frankly, in the past few years, that's really been the advantage for IU Southeast is the bullpen has, even if the starter hasn't had good stuff, been able to keep the Grindiers in it, and then the, bull, the offense will come through late and win it. But the offense is going to have to solve Franey here, which they have not been able to do really so far today. Two runs on five hits through the front five innings. Yeah, good battle by Powell here. And that one is hammered. He got all that one. He's going to watch it for a second as he can – let that one fly. That may have hit that car that's driving on Grenadier Lane back there, Stephen. An absolute bomb out to right by Luke Powell. Home run number two on the season. RBI number 18 cuts the deficit to two. So... Past two innings for IU Southeast. A couple quick outs and then some some two out magic. As that's kind of been a little bit, <laughs> their feel a little bit this year. Yep. Um, a lot of action with two outs and that one via the uh, two out solo shot. And Cody Putnam going to give his effort and try to double back there, but I think that one's going to be just a little high. And there to make the catch is Miller. So a loud two out. Bomb by Powell. Cuts it into the lead again. So we head to the top of the six. Brescia leads five to three. New pitcher for the Grenadiers, like we'd 
predicted last half, Stephen, be the senior from Louisville, Kentucky, Brendan Kester. Kester on the season making his eighth appearance. One and one in 11 and a third innings pitched. 16 strikeouts to just three walks. Yeah, it's going to be the designated hitter, Josh Cossett, to face Kester here. It's good first pitch changeup out of the bullpen. And like the Grenadiers, the Bearcats now have action down in their bullpen as well. And I thought at one point this year he, Kester would be maybe the midweek starter. And depending on how the scheduling has gone, that hasn't necessarily happened. But he's had really good stuff so far and has, again, been around the uh, strike zone and uh, been fair, had some fairly successful outings so far. So we'll see what he can do here against the Bearcats. Yeah, I got his... His one win against a ranked Indiana Wesleyan team. Cossett working a full count here. As I was very confused what was going on, but there's a ball in play down the right field bullpen. Ah, okay. I thought he may have been calling a pitch clock That's violation. I, I, was I was like, there's that was, no that way. That was very quick. <laughs> that one, that one's going to be hit well in the center. That's going to be a leadoff base knock. Good job by the Brescia designated hitter to lead things off. Case and Troutman will step in. And if you're a Kester here, you've got to get a, put another scoreless inning up. The Grenier's chipping away, chipping away. You can't afford to get Russia to tack on some insurance here. Yeah, as you mentioned. Last inning, this is one of the biggest spots of the game, most likely for IU Southeast. And a bunt, and that one is going to be foul. Troutman trying to do a little more than just a sacrifice there. As he finds himself behind 0-2 now once he makes his way back into the batter's box. And I wonder if you're going to see that on the Grenadier side when they get up to bat, if they can get a runner on. We've seen a lot of small ball with IU Southeast so far this year. Will they put the pressure on the defense with some bunts and things like that, maybe some stolen base attempts? Even though you're down a couple runs, you don't want to surrender outs if you can. But that seems to have worked for the Grenadier so far this season. Kester goes with breaking ball there. However, well outside for ball one. Throw back to first in plenty of time. Murphy trying for his second pickoff of the game, but nothing doing. Now, so good job by Troutman. Work the count back even after being down 0 and 2. That one's going to be down the line for another base hit. So back to back base hits for Brescia, and they're cooking as they turn the lineup over to DeMarco Miller. That just pulled right down the line. Shield could not get there and make the play. And Yeah, Shield, especially with the right-handed batter up, pretty far off the line. The fielder, seven, so I'm uh, wondering if that was 
counteractive to Troutman's traditional scouting report. But anyways, there's nobody out. Runners on first and second for DeMarco Miller. He squares the bunt. He'll get down one. So good job by Burdett to be there in time, but Miller does his job. That goes down as a one to four sacrifice. And now runners in scoring position with only one out. And Hubner, the best hitter on the team by average, entering today with a 386 batting average. So definitely the guy you want up in this situation if you're the Bearcats. Absolutely. Good job by Murphy to steal a strike there on a borderline pitch. One one pitch from Kester. That's going to be a wild pitch. Get to the backstop. And as you'd mentioned, Stephen, what you did not want here the Grenadiers is Brescia to add to the lead, and they do just that. And uh, the runner's able to move up from second as well, so a sacrifice fly here can tack on another run. And that ball just, you know, we've seen it depending on the ballpark, you know, that that come off the backstop back to the catcher and scored around, where in this case it just kind of got deadened by the padding back there and an easy scoring play there. And it looks like the Grinders are going to have a player-led little meeting. So after the meeting here, it's a good start there by Kester. As the Grenadiers do bring in the infield. And it's gonna, not going to matter as a good job from Kester to bounce back and get Hubner down on strikes. Big pitch there. Nice sequence of pitches there by Kester. Johnny Foti, third baseman. One for three with an RBI and a strikeout. That was the first pitch he sees straight back as Kester tries to strand Troutman at third base. Ooh, that one well inside. Almost catches a piece of Fody, but he dances out of the way. Big pitch here from Kester. And that's going to get through, so that's going to be another run. Score now 7-3 to three Brescia. So Brescia taking advantage of their opportunities here. A wild pitch and then a base hit drives in another run. 
just well placed. A couple of base hits here, just really well placed. One in the hole, one down the line. And two runs in here in the sixth for the Bearcats. And like you said, just a lot of timely hitting. Cleanup hitter now in the form of Clements. That one's chopped, and Shield comes in, makes a play on the run, and a good throw will get him in time, but not before Brescia scratches a couple across. So the Grenadiers are going to have to get back to work as they trail 7-3, to three, heading to the bottom of the sixth here in New Albany. Ethan Burdett will step in to face Franey for, I believe, the fourth time or the third time, Stephen? It'll be the third time. Oh, that's going to be off the third baseman, and that's going to be in. That's going to be beaten out down the line by Burdett. The wheels of Burdett come through again. That's going to be a that's going to be an error. I think most likely on the third baseman Fody. Hit sharply, but it's tough when a ground ball comes up and hits you off the chest to probably not rule that as an error. What do you think, Stephen? I would agree. I'm looking at the official score. He's giving me absolutely nothing over there. Thank you, Logan Stevens. We really appreciate you. <laughs> Likes to keep us honest. <laughs> Throw over, but back in plenty of time was Burdett. And if you're scoring at home, that was ruled an error. So Burdett will be aboard. Nice job by Flock not to chase that. With the speed on first, anything in the gap could score a run. They check on Burdett just as you say that. Yeah, Fran Franny's... 
thinking the same, trying to keep him as much at bay as he can. Especially if you can induce a ground ball, you'd like to be able to get two. And a throw, not in time, as that's going to be a little high. So good job by Troutman to corral it and try to put a tag on, but that's going to be a stolen base for Burdett. And now 2-1 count. Troutman, Troutman made that much closer than I thought it was going to be, so a nice job there by the infielder to try and get a tag on there. But Burdett slides in safely. Runner in scoring position for Flock. Uh, not, was that a strike or a ball, Stephen? It was a strike. I think 2-1. So Give me just a second. It is 1-2. That the pitch on the throwdown must have been a strike. So good job by Flock to battle with two strikes. I'm a I'm a big believer in just going ahead and asking the person that should know. Mm -hmm. Another one-two pitch to Flock, breaking ball, no chance, well outside. Great battle here by Flock. And again, with a running scoring position here, you don't want to give away an out by chasing a bad pitch. Just battle here and see if you can get something good to hit. Maybe shoot one into the gap. Yeah, see if the Grenadiers can get some sustained offense Correct. early. And nope. another, like you said, good battle. Don't need any two-out rallies at this point. Just string some hits together and keep the line moving. Yeah, and I think that's why you're just seeing some, some sticks on the board for the Grenadiers, and they just decide to kind of get going with two outs already so they don't give themselves any room for error. And that's about four. Oh, that one, not quite as a carbon copy. That catches the back of the press box, but. Since we know he has it in his arsenal, after a long battle like this, wouldn't be surprised to see a knuckleball from, mm -hmm. from Franey. Instead, he will Oh, and that one is not going to be foul. It's going to be hit far and gone. A two-run shot by Max Flock. That's going to cut right back into the Brescia lead as it's 7-5. to five. Another just tank out to right field. Flock comes through. And he didn't wait for a two-out rally this time. Drives in Burdett and gets the Grinders back in within a pair of runs. And we're going to have a uh, mound visit here from head coach John Herbig. His pitcher are only at 82 pitches, so maybe near the end of the leash, but probably just coming in to settle him down. You know, there's still nobody out. In the bottom of the sixth. Flock, home run number six, RBIs 25 and 26. Clutch piece of hitting and a great at bat. Looks like maybe just some words of encouragement as Herbig is going to stay with the senior from Owensboro, Kentucky, the hometown kid. Staying close to home for his college baseball, college career. And Logan Murphy will step in. 
try to get things restarted with no one out still. Already a couple runs across. Kind of show bunt, pull back, but a called strike nonetheless. Murphy 0 for 1 so far today. Breaking ball. Doesn't get the call in the outside half. And that hit him. That one, they're going to give him first base. He didn't make an attempt to get out of the way there, so kind of surprised that they're going to allow him to go to first, but that's going to do it for Franey, it appears, as Herbig is out over the line, so that'll do it for the Owensboro senior as we'll have a pitching change, number 22, Sean Pespisa, a sophomore from Laverne, California. So we'll have a pitching change, and we'll be back here momentarily. So the designated hitter, Trevor Goodwin, will be the first batter that Sean Pespisa will have to face. Does have a runner on first in the form of courtesy runner Braden Hazelwood and still nobody out. That one's going to be a first pitch rope into right field as Hazelwood going from first to third, see if the throw will be in time. It's going to be cut off by Troutman. So one pitch and one hit. Second time Trevor Goodwin's been on base today as he's settling right into that designated hitter spot. Pespisa now making his ninth appearance of the season. He's worked 22 innings, 7.36 ERA, and opponent batting average of 299. And we're going to have a pinch runner, not a courtesy runner. Big difference, Stephen. Mm -hmm. In the form of number two, Makai Stoner. He's fast. He is very fast. And he represents the tying run. So Brett Neffendorf going to his bench, putting some speed out on the base paths. And Colin Long will be the batter. Still nobody out. See if maybe we see some small ball bun yep. action. Oh, oh, that's a good one. That one's going to be a base hit as the first baseman didn't even look in. And a smart play there from uh, Hubner as he tried to maybe throw behind Stoner at second, but that's going to be a bunt base hit and an RBI. That's going to look like a shot in the book, Stephen. Look like a liner. Instead, it was just a perfectly placed bunt up the first base line, and nobody could get to it. Benoit, I think, had the opportunity to make a play, but still would have been tough. I think 
it's going to be hard to get the, the speedy long out on that regardless. But great bunt there and turns the lineup over for the IU Southeast Grenadiers. And I was thinking, you know, okay, is Slater going to try and bunt here? And he and, squared. He yep. did pull back, though, as that one was in the dirt. I think he's going to put another put one down here. Maybe they'll take it off and see if he can drive one in the outfield. But You know, I, I don't, especially top of the lineup, um, I don't hate it, especially nobody out. And but I also White. don't love giving away the first out yeah, because but, you're going right to the middle of your lineup. But you've got White with runners in scoring position then theoretically, so we'll see what happens. Oh, he's definitely – Putting it down. That, he puts down a good one. That's still going to be a tough play. So a good play there by the third baseman, Fody. It's well done on both ends. A nice bunt there by Shield and a good put out there to get there by Fody. And a nice throw across the diamond for the first out. Now runners at second and third for Mason White. And Mason looking to... Just find a barrel and find some grass in the outfield as that's going to score two with you have plus runners on both second and third. Stoner, your runner at third. Long, your runner at second. And they bring the left side of the infield in. And the first one, that's going to be right back up the middle and that's going to be a couple runs. Or I may have spoke a little too soon. No, I didn't, as that one's going to get away from the catcher. So White's going to move up to second as well. So a two RBI single, and then we will move into second on the throw. And Grenadiers fight all the way back here in the bottom of the six to take their first lead of the day. Chip away, chip away, chip away. And then Mason White comes through to clear the bases. And great base running as the throw goes up the line for him to go ahead and take second. So another runner now in scoring position for Luke Powell. Yeah, and that one just under the glove. I heard it nick the glove of Pespisa, but no one behind him as they had the left side of the infield pulled in. And I think there's a chance that they're able to get wide out at first if the left side's playing back maybe in their standard depth, Stephen. But instead it's... A base hit up the middle and White in at second on the throw. Yeah, didn't even get an opportunity to really give you the backstory on Pespisa as that one's in there. So now 0 and 2 quickly to Powell. Pespisa in his ninth appearance has 22 innings, so one of their bolt guys out of the bullpen. ERA, especially as a reliever, a little inflated around 7.3. Yeah, but he's done a good job coming in, throwing strikes at least. Couple base hits. So another 0 2 offering upcoming here to Luke Powell. Oh, and a good effort there by Powell, but just off the end and nowhere close to deep enough. Hubner will make the play as now two away for Cody Putnam. He would love to find his first hit of the afternoon. Yeah, you don't want to leave White strained out there at second at this point where you've gotten in front for the first time. You want to tack a run on here. Give yourself a little cushion. First pitch, that's going to be a hit. That's going to be down the line. Not caught, and that's going to be a run. Putnam sees the throw and is going to move up to second. So that's going to be a hustle double. A great job by Putnam there to see that the throw was not wasn't going to be into second, and he just took Never off. Never really stopped. Kept his momentum going. Yep. That's the benefit of uh, keeping your eyes in front and watching the play. So he'll replace White at second as the Grenadiers scored or pushed six across here in the bottom of the half, bottom half of the six. Words are hard, Stephen. And now a 
opportunity for Ethan Burdett to keep the line moving here. Yeah, especially with two outs just trying to pass back. And a good read by Putnam. And he'll be down in there safe at third. So a little risky decision there, but now a base hit definitely scores him if there was any doubt. We love the aggression on the base pass there by Putnam here throughout this entire inning. Yeah, first time Pespisa has not been ahead as there's either been early action from the Grenadiers or, you know, he did get ahead to Powell. See if he can battle back here, the 2-0 pitch. Hit third and there is Fody. And throw just in time. So Pespisa does get out of it, but the Grenadiers are going to scratch for six and take their first lead. So a big, big spot for the Grenadier bullpen in the top of the seventh as they claim their first lead in the form nine to seven as we head to the final third of this game. I'm not ready. New pitcher for IU Southeast, senior left-hander Gavin Canoost. Gavin being his sixth appearance. Love to forget the ERA up to this point, about 4.2. But stats don't matter if you can come in and, in a big spot here and do a job, Stephen. Yeah, you – Big spot here for him. Hopefully, you know, you just got to attack these batters and just get the Grenadiers back in the box here after they've come all the way back. And then, quite frankly, with the way that they played offensively through the front, probably, I would say, certainly four innings, maybe five innings, it's, it's quite sh shocking that they were able to put together a six-run inning because they weren't – able to keep the lineup moving at all. It was two out rallies and uh, scratching across one run essentially each inning. So now if you're on the defensive side, you've just got to get outs and attack the batters here. Canoost ahead to the catcher gamble. One and two. That one. Chop to shield. Makes a good play on it. The throw strong and plenty of time. And that's got to give Gavin some confidence here. Okay, you've come in, you got retired the first batter. Now keep it going. As that brings up the right fielder for Brescia, Kendall Quartz. And this is a guy who's been in big spots before. He was in the he's on the World Series team in 2021 and had uh, really good outings then. Played a, a huge role in winning the opening, opening round against round. Tennessee Wesleyan. 
the experience has subsided him a little bit later in his career, but looking to you know channel some of those experiences and get back on the horse. And a good job there to get ahead 0-2 to Quartz. And the pitch. Good miss there. But a good job by Quartz to lay off. Works battles and stays alive. We'll have another one two pitch here. And we'll do it again. A good battle from Courts. He's going to make Canoe start in this one. That one hit high, also foul. A little closer to didn't play that time, Steven, but. Good pitch there, and that's gonna be a tough play as Quartz is moving, but throwing plenty of time from Burdett. A nice job by Canoose there. That's a tough pitch to really do anything with, with, and just pulls it over to the second baseman for dead and a strong throw there to beat uh, Court there. The court's there. Hugo Benoit now the batter. He'll watch first pitch in there for strike one as if the first pitch could be anything other than strike or ball one. <laughs> Just calling out my own redundancy. <laughs> that one off the end, that's going to be have to come in. On it is White, and he'll make the catch. So a great inning there and a huge zero after the sixth spot for the Grenadiers. So great job by Gavin Knust as we'll head to the bottom of the seventh. Grenadiers still lead this one 9-7. to seven.
Max Flock, who got the scoring started in the bottom half of the last inning, will lead off in the seventh. New pitcher for Brescia is number 10, Josh Martini, senior from Cincinnati, Ohio. Speaking of Cincinnati Martini, I wonder if he's related to uh, Reds legend Nick Martini after a couple home runs on opening day yesterday, Steven. Shout out, Nick Martini. Also, shout out to uh, the the father of Grenadier legend, Mark Romero, in the form of Mark Romero Sr. Listening all the way in from Venezuela. Got the game in on his TV all the way from Venezuela, so shout out, Mark Romero Sr. Thanks for watching. Always, as... First pitch to Max Flock will miss inside. Ooh, and a good overhand breaking ball to even things up. That's Fruit. about – Martini's got about as over the top of the delivery as you're going to see. That just froze Flock right there. Dropped from the heavens. Brescia. Pleading a hard case, trying to say that flock went around. I think it would have probably been really close, and with the umpire being down the first baseline for a left-handed hitting flock, probably not going to get a call regardless, so no check. That one hit off the end, but hit high. Wind blowing out could play a factor, but Hubner there to make the catch, so not as good of a start here in the bottom of the seventh as they had in the sixth. And that'll make way for Logan Murphy. Murphy's walk-up song I think could be described as vibey. Thoughts, Stephen? Big vibes by Logan Murphy here. Chill vibes. That one fouled off. As a, that, is, that is a very difficult pitch to – probably see out of the hand as that thing is a very traditional 12-6 curveball just breaks sharp down. And a good job by Martinez. He's ahead 0-2 now to the Grenadier catcher. That one hit high. Under it is Hubner, I believe, and he'll be there to make the catch. So two quick outs for Josh Martini as that's exactly what John Herbig needed from his bullpen. And staying in for Trevor Goodwin will be Makai Stoner, so he will take over the duties as the designated hitter. So Goodwin's day is done, and now Stoner will try and continue the inning here in the seventh with two away. That one's going to miss high. And, you know, Makai still trying to find his footing at the plate, has played a huge role for the Grenadiers, especially in the form of a courtesy runner and slash, pit, slash pinch runner. Hitting 250 and only eight at bats. Especially with two outs here. Kind of surprised to not see the re entry of Trevor Goodwin. Um, as Goodwin definitely has the power to do some damage with two outs. Mm -hmm. As does Stoner. Just have not quite seen it from him yet this year. Uh, the two and two pitch will be high and run things full. Three two pitch from Martini. Breaking ball skied into shallow center, but there to make the play is Troutman. So three up, three down. So for the Bearcat reliever. And we'll head to the top half of the eighth inning. Score remains 9 7 IU Southeast.
Josh Cossett will try to get things going in the top of the eighth for the Bearcats. As Gavin Canoose is back out for another inning of work. Senior getting rewarded with another inning after a very good inning. The St. Anthony, Indiana native. As Cossett will foul that one off the screen. Gavin has a sign and will deliver a 2-2. Yeah, good change up, a good job there for Murphy to corral it, but Cossett wasn't fooled. That one cut on and missed. So good job there by Knust to get the leadoff man down on strikes. As that'll bring up the shortstop now, Case and Troutman. Troutman two for two with an RBI. And it appears that Murphy may have uh, may have needed maybe a new battery is what I believe I heard, yeah, Steven. That's what I heard too. As fastball up, cut on and missed. So quickly 0-2. And, and it does appear that Neffendorf decides to go to a hand signal system rather than stopping the inning to re replace the battery pack in the headset. That one hits the bowl <laughs> just a bit outside. We'll go we'll we'll double down on the movie references, Steven. Whenever you can say just a bit outside, it's it's a good it's a good good time. Count one and two. Count now two and two. Case and Troutman, really nice day so far. Two for two with an RBI. Yeah, out of the nine hole. Yeah. yeah that one's going to miss well outside to run it full. Not something you'd love to see is the nine hole get on, especially with just a two run lead. But that one, that one's gonna be hit well in the air. That's gonna be in the gap. And there in plenty of time though to make the catches, Colin Long. As off the bat, I thought that had a chance to get down for extra bases, but Long there, that one just kinda hung up in the air. It hung up there, but a, a long run by Long there to huh. end up over. Uh, <laughs> no pun intended, to <laughs> range into the gap and make that catch. I thought he, White was going to call him off. but I mean, you pretty much have three center fielders in the alpha for mm -hmm. IU Southeast, as they won, have actually all played center field even here for the Grenadiers at some point this year. Has first pitch to Miller, skied, but it's going to be back out of play. as I think your opening day center fielder is in right field. Mason, obviously, has mm -hmm. kind of been your everyday center fielder for the majority of the season, but some time, especially early in the season, as a defensive replacement out in center was long before taking over pretty much the full-time left field role. Um, and, you know, long gold glover at Vincennes University in Division II Junior College, and a good pitch there from Canoes to get ahead one and two. Reminds you of the no-fly zones of old that I played with. Mm -hmm. I know frequent listener Logan Coughlin, Grenadier great, was part of those. As That's going to be a great pitch there and a fantastic outing for 
Gavin Knust if that's going to be his day, which we'll see. But we head to the bottom of the eighth. Granite are still leading, looking to extend on their lead, 9-7. After making a long ranging play in the top half, Colin Long will lead it off for the Grenadiers. As Martini out for his second inning of work. I thought about making a second drink reference there, but I it I stopped is, myself. It is happy hour. Luis Martini doesn't get the call there. That one's going to be fouled back. This umpire loves to throw the ball to the pitcher. <laughs> I'll tell you what. In my uh, experience, one, being a pitcher and then umpiring as well, there's nothing more difficult than throwing. It's like throwing in shoulder pads. Mm, yeah, it, fair point. Because it is. They're pretty much shoulder pads. That one's going to be back and right off Martini, off his calf, and he's going to recover to get the out. Nice play to stay with it there yeah, by Martini. Yeah, because, I mean, it's not the – Slowest runner by any means no. and long busting down the line. So see if maybe anyone takes a second to uh, check on him as that one caught, looked like a lot of calf. Mm -hmm. He's fine. He, is, he, he He's looks on locked the mound. in. He's ready to go. He said, I'm rolling. I don't need anyone to break up my rhythm. As that's four batters faced and four batters retired for Martini. But the lineup turns over for Slater Shield. He's looking for his first hit of the contest. Shield ahead in the count, 2 0. That one bounces in there. So, two quick outs followed up by a four-pitch walk. I'm going to have to say that may have been a little bit of the announcer's curse, but not, not too upset as it benefits the home, the home team. And now White will step in with one on and one out here. So, Martini was cruising, but has to face the 
tough batter here, White, two for four with two RBIs. And Shield back. But a good idea to keep an eye on him as Shield is very likely to take off as he is the leader on the Grenadiers with 17 stolen bases coming into today. Pop quiz, you know who our second leading base stealer is, Stephen? Who would that be? That will be the guy at the plate as well. So not only does he lead the team in home runs with 12, he has 12 stolen bases to go just with it. And Shield, um, let's see, where is he? Here's a strike. Third in the conference in stolen bases. White coming into today, 426 batting average with 46 RBIs. That one on this high. To go along with his 12 home runs, does have 12 doubles. So, by far the leader on the team in total bases with 97. Next closest is Burdett with 49. So, you could say that Mason's been the driver of this Grenadier offense. 2-1 pitch. That one smoked down to the bullpen, so the uh, the protector <laughs> definitely getting his money's worth of his job down there, even though it kind of got past him. <laughs> that, that was smoked. Ripped foul. I can promise you I've never hit a ball that hard in my life. As I will continue to reference, I have not hit since I was uh, 16 years old. Yeah, we didn't bring you here to hit. No, we did not. We did bring Mason here to hit as 2-2. Two -two. That one's hit high. That one's got a chance. I don't think he got all of it, but that's going to be towards the gap. And a long run and a, a great diving play out there was Quartz as that was as long of a run as you're going to find because that thing was just up there for felt like minutes. Way to range all the way over there and then hang on. Big out there for courts to retire White and send Shield back to first. Well, that brings up the right fielder, Luke Powell, who, if you recall earlier in this game, had an absolute moonshot. One for four with that solo shot. I think you can make the argument that after his home run started the shift a little bit of the momentum for the Grenadiers. As the throw is going to be nowhere in time as Shields is going to have his, uh, I believe, 18th stolen 18th base stolen on the stolen year. Base, yep. And there's a strike. Good, pal. Kind of interesting as I thought that one was well outside. I watched the home plate umpire and he signaled strike the whole time, so... Like usual, as our, our boss would point out, I am wrong often. So, as that one's fouled, so quickly 0-2. And, so, we have this game here today and then doubleheader tomorrow to close out the series at 1 p.m. Eastern time before the Grenadiers hit the road for a little bit. The 0-2 from Martini. That one hit well. Don't know if he got all of it. Miller going back on the track. Makes an acrobatic catch, and that's a great play out there in center by DeMarco Miller to He's retire the inning. A couple of nice plays defensively there by Miller here in this game to save some runs. So we'll head to the ninth as... Here's we're going to have Casey Cheek coming in to try to close this one for the Grenadiers. So we'll be back in just a moment as the Grenadiers lead this one 9-7.
Casey Cheek will enter to try and nail this one down. He's making his seventh appearance. He's worked six innings, has one save, nine strikeouts to five walks. And he's given up five runs, four earned in those uh, seventh appearance. This will be his seventh appearance, so six appearances so far. Yeah, one thing I want to highlight on Cheek is his Ks per nine is right around 13 and a half. So he's about, you know, one walk for every two strikeouts. So if we'll see, I think, pretty early. If he's in the zone, he can be electric on in the back end of this bullpen. It'll be the... Uh, the leading hitter for the Bearcats, though, to lead things off in the form of Hubner. As he'll watch first pitch strike. Hubner one for two with a strikeout today. Last two pitches miss a little low there. Yeah, maybe the internal clock for Cheek just taking a little fast. See if he can kind of settle in. As that one. And a good effort there by Putnam. I don't think it's going to be in time, but a good try there by Cody. As a great diving effort to at least – Keep it in the infield. Keep it in the infield. An infield hit there for Hubner, his second hit of the day. And the tying run will come to the plate. And that will be Johnny Foti. Two for four, two RBIs, and a strikeout. Ball one. And a good bounce back pitch there from Cheek. You know, and we talked about it off air a little bit, Stephen, but this is traditionally a spot you'd see Garrett Hill in, but possibly nursing some sort of injury. Not too sure as that one is going to be caught in a great oh. diving play by Colin Long, as I thought that was down for sure. For sure. Instead, he lays out and makes the catch, stealing it out here in the top of the ninth. And it looks like uh, Mikey Clements is going to reenter back into that spot in the four hole. And I mean, you can – I can see the shine of the gold glove from Vince Sins from here after that one, Stephen. <laughs> what a play. Great defensive plays all over the diamond today in this one on both sides. And, and as a pitcher, that definitely kind of amps you up some and gives you some confidence. And we'll see if Cheek can continue to battle here as a right back in the zone. Wow, can't say enough about that play from Long. Absolute robbery. 1-1 one, one pitch here to Clements. That was going to be a ground ball, and this could do it. That's the out there. And in time. But we're going to see. They're going to appeal to make sure that he stepped hold. You're going to see, make sure that he was on. I'm not sure if he was. And he was. Wow. So that's going to do it. A 6-4-3 to four to three double play. And the Grenadiers are going to take game one, 9-7. to seven. Not, I think we can all agree, Stephen, not the prettiest game for the Grenadiers. But a win is a win. Yeah, and I mean, you know, this may be one where you look at it and you say, on, you know, it, yeah, it wasn't a Picasso by any stretch, but it's one you can definitely – look and say, hey, we came back, we battled, we hung in there, and then once we took the lead, defensively made great plays, and the pitching staff, Gavin Knust, Casey Cheek, 
in particular in the bullpen just shut down the Brescia offense. Yeah, and, I mean, we talked about it earlier. How big is the last couple innings of Schaefer's outing, right? Not right. to get into the bullpen in the third, and kudos to head coach Brett Neffendorf on trusting his guy and not going to him there, um, which he gets you through five, and you just trust your defense that they're going to – or you trust your offense, rather, that they're going to get you back in the game. And, I mean, right in the bottom of the six is the difference as they score six, take the lead, and they don't look back. So Brendan Kester will get the win. He moves to two and one on the season. Casey Cheek will get a save, his second. Well, uh, let's see if I can – Franey here will get the loss. He's four and four now on the season. The Grenadiers move to 19 and 12. Brescia moves to 12 and 21. The Grenadiers are now 11 and 2 in conference play, while Brescia falls to 6 and 7. And we will be back with the doubleheader games two and three of this three game conference series tomorrow. Game one at 1 o'clock Eastern Time for our Central Time listeners. And that's going to do it. For Stephen Utz, I'm Kyle Hawkins. Grenadiers take game one by a final score of 9-7, to seven, and we'll see you all tomorrow.